Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to tonight's show. Obviously, uh, we have another interview this time with Landfear. Going to be joining us in a moment here, but hopefully you guys enjoyed today's show. Just a quick reminder, if you haven't already, hit that follow button if you enjoyed the stream. Uh, if you have any questions for uh, the guest, Landfear tonight, or myself, you can type them in the Twitch chat. However, we will get to those um, later on for the interview. If you want to, there's a command called SMH by questions. And uh, essentially, it's a Google document link. You click the link, you type in your name, you type in your question, then we'll get to it in about an hour or so. But anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed today's show. And I'm your host, Owen Rebel. And we're going to be introducing our guests coming from behind the curtains, Lanfear. <laughs> Woo! Let's go! Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you'd love to uh, take a seat next to me. Yes, the LAN. Heck yeah. So, for those who are also unaware, just so everyone's on the same page here, obviously I've interviewed Landfear before, and also Landfear is a mute, so how this interview will be conducted is I asked Landfear a bunch of questions, and uh, she has typed all these questions out to me. And essentially, I'm going to be uh, reading the questions, and then the, the camera will go on Lanfear when I'm reading the answers to these, to these questions. And also, Lanfear can also DM me via Discord if they have any follow up um, on anything, or if they want to ask me a question or clarify something. So, hopefully, you guys enjoy today's interview. Uh, just to, so everyone knows, because a lot of people always ask me, How do you interview mutes? And I'm like, This is how I do it. So, people are like, Oh, it makes sense. Anyway, hopefully I have a wonderful time here. Landfear, it's always nice to see you. So, without further ado, let's get into the first question I asked Landfear. So the first question I asked Landfear was, how have you been doing in general since the last interview? And Landfear responds by saying, that's quite the opening question. It's crazy to think that the last time we did an interview was a week before in the end of Vice Season 2. Oh man, that, that it has been a long time. Because it's been season three now, which is a couple years old now. A lot has uh, happened since then, both good and bad, but the but the good far outweighs the bad, thankfully. I got away from some really unhealthy situations. I've been uh, more involved in a lot more positive ones, which has been focused, well, I've been focusing primarily on those. This past year has largely been one of the most best years I've ever had since 2017 slash 2018, when Nags and I were team working on his YouTube uh, videos and adventures. A few things I've been doing since the last interview has been the Neon Divide RP. I have participated in some of Rob's RP lobbies back when that was more common. Started uh, and then started up my YouTube channel, or should I say, started uploading videos finally and made the decision to start streaming. Yeah, it's. I mean, I always, I, I never thought you would actually end up streaming. I'm gonna be honest with you here. I, I thought you'd be one of those who's just around all these, you know, content creators and streamers and YouTubers. And like, I, I would say uh, in the VR chat space, your name is almost like a household name. You know how like people are always re remember like William Shatner from like Star Trek or something. Like I would say Landfear is like, not, maybe not like eh, William Shatner's kind of up there, but you know what I mean? Like if I said Landfear, people would be like, oh yeah, that's the Neko Cat Girl. Like, they'd be like, oh, yeah, I saw them on, like, Rob stream. Oh, yeah, I saw them in Nags Adventures. Oh, oh yeah, they run, like, their own um, cabin parties and stuff. So, like, that that's the type of stuff. Like, it's, a, it's like a name that's, like, recognizable. I remember, I think, uh, before you started doing content, making YouTube videos and streaming, I think you had, like, I don't remember how many subs you had on YouTube, but it was, like, I think you had zero videos, but you had, like, thousands and thousands and thousands of subs. I was like, holy crap. Like so many people were subscribing because they're they're just waiting. They're like, "Yo, when's Lanfear gonna start making videos?" Yeah, I thought that was insane. I'm just like, "Damn." Uh, over 6k, I think. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something it was something like that. I knew it was definitely a few thousand. It reminds me of uh, an old friend of mine. I haven't seen him in many years, but Vigors used to play VR chat, and he still has never streamed ever. But his Twitch has like 60,000 or 100,000 followers. He's never streamed once. So it's the same kind of like, you know, 
fame without even streaming. It's just a household name. But anyway, back on the interview here. So my next question that I, I asked Landfear was, what got you interested in streaming and wanted to, to start creating content after being in the community for such a long time? Hey, nice segue question, right? So uh, Landfear answers the question by saying, I've always been interested in streaming and creating content of my own, but for a long time, it never really was a priority for me. I was involved and partnered with a few other content creators and was, was happy focusing on contributing and working with them. I also had a few events that I largely ran myself that took a lot of my time and focus. Uh, when those commitments more or less ended and people branched off to do their own things, I found myself a lot of free time and wasn't really sure what to do with myself. I spent a lot of, of time adventuring and exploring VRChat, other events, and got involved with uh, Rob's RP lobbies as well as anything else that seemed fun and interesting. I finally decided that I wanted to try creating my own content first with YouTube videos. I really enjoyed recording and working with an editor to make those and that was fun for a while. Eventually, those slowed down to a number of reasons and took a while to uh, readjust, readjust, sorry, my brain, readjust and get those, uh, get those going again. On my birthday last year, after a lot of encouragement from friends and older supporters, I decided to try streaming. At that time, I was in a bit of a bad place and I thought it might be a good outlet and get back into the positive experiences and fun I had back when I first joined. The community it's been the most best decision or sorry it's been the best decision i made in a long time and i wouldn't change it for the world everyone has been so supportive and sweet they've been a constant motivation for me to share more fun experiences uh together with yeah i mean i i'm one of those people i've been saying it for a long time you know I've been saying it for a long time. I always told Landfear ever since like I met them. I was like, you don't stream? You don't make content? What the? Huh? I was like, is this real? I, I always thought you did. And then I, I was just generally surprised. You know, like I said earlier, I was generally surprised you that you never uh, got into doing content. And then you, you finally said, you know what? I'm going to do it. And I'm glad you did. Because I feel like, hold on, I'm going to take a drink. I, I will be drinking a lot of water, so if, excuse me if I'm like taking water breaks and be talking a lot, obviously. That was a common reaction from people? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I think um, what I like to say is um, if anybody out there is on the fence about streaming um, or doing YouTube, just just do it. Like, it's just for fun. You know, don't expect like the, you know, everything to become popular or something. Like, just do it for fun. And the reason why, another reason why I wanted Landfear to actually start streaming is because it allows Landfear to be able to stream their point of view or record their own point of view and then have memories of that, right? Because sometimes really cool stuff happens. And if nobody records it and nobody streams it, then it's just a memory that slowly fades away of age. You know, but if someone records it, then you can be like, yeah, I remember that, you know, this is that funny moment when this thing happened or this like horror map or like, oh, I got jump scared. And then someone clips and go like, oh, Lanfear got jump scared, which probably doesn't happen. But I'm just saying, you know, as an example, that's that's why streaming is fun for, um, you know, because it allows you to experience stuff in real time and all that stuff. So anyway, next question. That we have here uh that i asked landfear was what was your experience like with your first stream how were you feeling what were you expecting was it overwhelming lots of support and then landfear uh, answers the question by saying my first stream was on my birthday which is normally a very chaotic day of lots uh lots of happening uh yeah well it's lots happening uh, there was a bit of an adjustment getting used to all the overlays and programs. Oh yeah, access overlay, you know, this, this Twitch chat and stream elements and 10 menus and whatever. Um, anyway, adjusting settings and all that, but I spent a bit of time getting as much as I could ready before, so there wasn't a whole lot that needed fixing on the technical side of things. I was admittedly very nervous. When I, when I first pressed that start streaming button. I think a lot of people are first time streaming or just streaming in general. Like, I can't tell how many times I've read on Twitter, someone's like, I think the biggest hurdle as a streamer is to press that start streaming button. Like that's the first like step. Like that's like, that's like the hardest part. Even if you stream for 10 years, like 
you know, just pressing that button and just taking a deep breath and going ahead. So don't feel bad. Like I, a lot of people still feel that. Anyway, uh, when I first press that start stream button and that actually hasn't really gone away. Sorry, I was jumping the gun there. Yes. One of the, one of the hardest things to do is pushing that start stream even to this day. I was right. Without even reading further, I already knew it. I already predicted the future. And just to let you know, I didn't, I didn't read any of this prior. I want to read this you know, first hand. So yeah, there you go. See, I knew it. I honestly didn't know what to expect. And I went into the experience as more of a test to see how I would enjoy it. It would be fun and something that I want to do more of. I actually went on adventures and did all kinds of things. So bringing chat and everyone along to share those with me was a big motivation. The amount of support I got was pretty overwhelming, especially when nags raided, raided me and chat exploded. I, I, uh, I found myself having a hard time keeping up with all the love, but everyone was so sweet and understanding. It took me a little, uh, little to catch up and get settled into interacting with chat and everyone around me, which eventually got better at, uh, which I, sorry, which I eventually got better at doing. I apologize. Sometimes I stutter a little bit. After the first day, I knew that was something, this was something I wanted to pursue and share many more experiences with everyone. It gave me a bit of a nostalgia of how the community was back in 2017, 2018, and I've been putting everything I have into it. Thanks for the fall. I appreciate that. But, um, yeah, 100%, like I said, um, stream, like pressing the stream button is honestly, um, one of the hardest things you can do. I, I, I gotta give you props, Landfear, because you, you started streaming and you 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 went off with like a bang, like whole, like on your birthday, doing all these things, all these raids, all these support. And also ever since then, you've been streaming like, I, I swear, I looked at your previous, like 10, 12, 14 hours. I'm like, what the, I barely streamed like two hours and Landfear's streaming like 14 hours a day. Like what the heck? This is this is streamer in the making. This is like the next like big streamer right here, dude. Like what the hell? Fourteen hours a day. I can't even. I can't even talk for like ten minutes. Like what? How? I, that's that's commitment right there. You know. So it's like if Landfear was like, yeah, I'm gonna do a twenty four hours. That's like nothing to you. If I did a twenty four, I'd be like dead asleep. I was like, what the heck? I don't know how you have so much energy. It's all that catnip or something. Like what the heck? Mm. Give it a try and see how you or sorry, that's the previous one. I've done a few 24 hours randomly. Yeah, you're just like, yeah, let me just play for 24 hours randomly. Uh, geez, I never even done a 24 hour once, not even once. The longest I ever streamed was 14 hours, and that was for like a special thing, and that. I mean, I was like very bored. I'll, I'm gonna be honest. Most of it was in VR chat. The funny thing is, I can play like if it's in like I think the hardest thing for me is a VR chat 24 hour because when because I play some games like I played like Diablo and other games like random desktop games I can go for eight hours easily. For some reason, when it comes to VR games, I just get super tired and like exhausted faster. Probably because I have a headset that's like a personal heater squeezing my brain, so that's probably why. Uh, try 48 hour plus? Oh my god. One step at a time, one step at a time. Yeah, I mean, if you were there for the 48 hour with me, maybe I could survive. I feel like by myself, doing 24 hours is like torture. I, I remember back in the day, you know, like four plus years ago, every like, this is before you stream, but a lot of people would do 24 hours in VR chat and some of these people would like do like 24 hours in VR chat inside like a padded cell and they would just stare at a wall for 24. I'm not even joking. Why? I don't know. It, it was like the meta is like if you weren't, if you didn't do a 24 hour sitting in like presentation room, like you weren't a real streamer or something like it was like the, it was like a, a rite of passage. I never did that. And I was just like, what the hell is this, man? These people are insane. Just casually doing 24 hours, uh, you know, with this headset on, they would constantly, this is, you know, before index. So they would use, just use an in, or, uh, Oculus and constantly just keep changing the batteries on Oculus. 
which by the way, I do think that the index should have uh, batteries, so you can just change them out, just like my old Oculus Rift, but yeah, it is what it is. So, that sounds terrible. I mean, it is torture in a way, so that's probably why some people did it. Anyway, next question. So next question that I asked the land fear was, how'd you end up meeting Snowbreeze, and what adventures have you gone on with uh, Snowbreeze? Uh, Landfear answers the question by saying, I first met Snow in 2020 during one of the Friday events. Rob brought her along to introduce us, and it was a little surprising seeing a little gremlin creature clinging onto me that had a similar look. It was all well into the nights, uh, so I was a little pretty intoxicated at that point. It was a pretty silly... It was pretty silly, though. After that, I think we would see each other around, but didn't really interact or start talking to maybe a year or so later. Oh, really? Damn. Uh, which kind of leads to a funny story. This was during the RP lobbies Rob would have every Tuesday, I believe. Yes, he still does them, even yesterday. Uh, I joined one day after waking up late and was pretty tired, so I ended up having an energy drink beforehand to get me going, which I quickly found out it works really well on me. Uh, energy drinks? Oh, you should get sponsored. You're not a streamer now. <clears throat> I randomly saw Snow, I think, hanging out on the bar, and I just randomly untied her shoelace, which then progressed into tying her shoelaces together, then her hands, and eventually hogtied her up. Well, this words this is going. Uh, that progressed into the rest of the night of me holding her hostage, in quotations, and people would come up and and some really silly interactions came from that. Eventually, I think that led into a contract of some sort and I ended up leaving with her and the rest is history. Oh my. Holy. That's uh, quite the story. Uh, geez, it sounds like... Uh, <sighs> sounds like some Stockholm Syndrome from Snow Breeze, you know what I'm saying? Um. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> that's just RP, by the way, right? That's what Chips used to say. Hogtied? Yeah, even the chat's like, blush hogtied. I wish that was me. Okay, chat, relax, dude, relax. Still later told me she was scared of me. Going back a little bit on why it took so long for us to get started. They were scared of you? What the heck? Really? I mean, it, maybe it's because they were so small. I mean, like, when you're, like, literally, like, can't even reach this table, and then you see a giant, oh my god, Neko Cat Girl, oh jeez, prouncing her brow, you know, that they'll probably be like, oh my god. They're probably scared, you know? I mean, when you're that tiny, you know, everything's massive and, and intimidating, you know? So I don't blame them, I guess. I heard they're, they're all grown up now, you know? Now they, they've... It's like The Sims. They, like, went from baby mode to, like, adult mode, you know? It's just the way it is. So. Anyway. Um, the next question I have here. Uh, for land fear is what is the story behind you in the ball pits more specifically toilet paper ones uh, You ever ha you even have an emote to sorry you even have an emote to for it Yes, yeah, so I did my research. I was like what's going on here? Okay, every time I tune into the land fear stream There's like a ball pit and like toilet paper like what's going on here. I gotta know So anyway land fear uh, answers the question by saying what do you mean ever been in a ball pit? They're just fun. Uh, they are fun to be in. Never gets old. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I guess you're not wrong. You know, I mean, I know I don't really. My my room doesn't. It's not really suitable for full body. So like, I'll be on, like the hardwood, and I'm just like, ow. If I try and jump in a, you know, that's just immersion. But you know, if I actually had a bull pit IRL and then I jumped in while in VR, that'd be pretty sick. But anyway, the toilet paper was a feature of one of the worlds I found. I'm guessing as a COVID joke. And that seems to, to fit a bit, uh, sorry, that seems to fit a lot better. Cats and playing in toilet paper, since then it became a redeem on my channel as a way to keep me from spending too much time there on my own. But I think everyone enjoys it much as I do. 
I totally forgot that was a COVID thing. Like, I remember people running out of toilet paper. That was, God, that was two years ago. Jeez, I can't, that was such a long time ago, man. The, 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 the toilet paper scare. Oh, there's, sorry, there's one more uh, sentence after here I skipped. But I think everyone enjoys as much as I do. I don't have an emote for it as of yet, but that is a good idea. Oh, I thought you did. I, I swear I saw, maybe it was like, uh, maybe someone combined it with like a toilet paper emoji or something. That's what it was. Okay, that's what I was thinking of. Cause I saw, I was watching a VOD and then I saw someone put like a land for emote and then it had like a toilet paper emoji right after it or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Neko's like hardwood, hardwood floors? What, like scratch or something? Well, the floor I have here is actually carpet, uh, but if you ever like laid on your back and then we're on the carpet, dude, I'm like an eight year old man when I'm on the floor, okay? Even even my own uh, Twitch mod can uh, vouch for this. I, I wanted the ground to like lay down to be comfy and full body and I couldn't get back up. I felt like a tortoise, a turtle, you know, on, like on its back and be like, eh, eh. like I was like, I can't get up, dude. I was like Humpty Dumpty and I fell off the wall and I was like, I can't. I'm all broken, help me out. You know, that's how I felt. <sighs> I do have, uh, whatchamacallit, a, a bean bag, like a giant bean bag chair, right? That's like a requirement if you want to be a VR chat player. Um, I do have one, but the unfortunate reality is that I live with my brother and his dog uh, that I take care of thinks it's his. So he'll constantly jump in it and then constantly make it stinky. And then he's also, because he's a male dog, try and pee on it multiple times. And you can't wash this thing because this thing is like giant. You can't stick it in the washing machine, so I can't wash it. So I decided I can't have it in my room. It's been sitting in my bedrooms collecting dust for a year. Which sucks. They spent like 400 bucks on it. But when I get my own place, then I can use it. And then I can finally be like, ah, you know, chill in full body for the first time in like five years. Yes. So... It's one of the, it's not a beam, it's a, it's a memory foam. It's like a high end uh, thing. So it's very nice. I tried it a few times. It actually was really comfortable. I was like, damn, but having a dog there, he's just like, oh, it's my bed. He thinks it's just a giant dog bed. And then, and then he's one of those dogs that likes to mark his territory all the time. So it's not a good, it's not a good thing, you know, to do stinky dogs. Can you can ever have nice things? That's right. That's what I'm saying, you know? So I bought it. It's been sitting in my bedroom behind a closed door for like a year. So whenever whenever I get my own place, get my own apartment, I'll finally be able to use it, finally. <sighs> it was an investment. Cause I just want to lay down. Cause like, right, cause I'm in an office. I'm not in a bedroom. So when I like lay down, it's just uncomfortable. Like I'm like, ow. So I have to like sit on a chair all the time, which sucks because sometimes I just want to lay in like, you know, in VR and then be on a bed in VR chat and like, I can't do that. But whatever. Anyway, uh, next question we have here for Land Fear is, how's your experience with Neon Divide season three and role playing in general? Follow up question, do you have any interest in joining other RP groups? Lanfear responds by saying, season three, it was a lot of fun for me. With uh, most large projects, there was a few frustrations, but overall it was a very positive experience. I was lucky enough that my initial story weave idea, which uh, introduced a lot of other characters, was of interest enough to be included. And with the very hard work from Mai, uh, or Mahai, uh, and a, f a number of others, it was brought to life Far exp uh, sorry, sorry, far exceeding what I could have ever dreamed of. The ending of the season was pretty exciting too, and I'm looking forward to seeing what changes, fixes, and adjustments we made for season four to make the RP even better. I'm always interested in an RP and would be open to drawing more if I have the time for it. I participated briefly in an RP of Curry, which was a fun and a different experience. I really enjoyed that. Uh, one of RPs, one off, sorry, one off RPs are always fun and I always have a few plans for some of those on my own. I also wanted to try and get back into a more metaverse RP and see what's going on with all that since the crossover. You mean the, 
the YouTube uh, Twitch crossover from like 2018 with mags and chips and all that. Oh, that's going strong. Hunt like, um, so a lot of that RP, I can give you a little insight since we're here now. Um, it's with the uh, Purple Lotus, so uh, Sachi's actually completely redone the whole like map of Karita and essentially uh, the the Purple Lotus is like the hub for like kind of like a sub of the metaverse. And so if you ever want to get into the metaverse, I, I would say the easiest way is to just go to Purple Lotus and whatever they run that a couple times a week. And they have all these crazy sort of like story arcs and stuff going on i i haven't joined any of it i thought about doing it uh just recently after neon divide because i've retired uh of joining the joining and doing that once in a while and they have a lot of like crazy plot lines like like you know sachi getting kidnapped or something i don't know some crazy stuff like that i'm like what I don't know, there's a bunch of like weird stuff going on. There's like 50 other role plays. You're all like getting involved and like people are like fighting each other and all these crazy like, you know. Point is just if you're interested, just go to uh, the Purple Lotus and uh, you slowly be like, what the heck is going on in this place? But yeah. Next question was, uh, how did your birthday slash one year celebration go? I've heard you went for 56 hours and into an uncapped subathon. Lanfear responds by saying, it was absolutely amazing. Everyone was so sweet and supportive much like a year ago when I first started streaming. I wanted to do something special and had my very first subathon with giveaways and some really fun goals. I had initially planned to do a 24 hour but it was so much fun I decided to make it uncapped, which everyone capitalized on, and it quickly went to 56 hours. <laughs> I did manage to get a short nap in a cat nap before chat woke me up. It was a little sad when it ended, but I loved the experience. I'll probably do it again next year or something big comes up when we can do something like that again. 56 hours? <laughs> You're insane. How I can't even do 24 hours, doing 48 hours, doing 56 hours. <laughs> you know what's crazy is these people doing these uncapped subathons. There's some of these people do like 800 hour streams. There's one I literally swear to God I saw a guy like last month do 800 hour stream in VR chat. Granted, he did he did sleep half of the time, but I was just like, bro, what the heck? <laughs> What are you doing, man? This guy's just sitting here like, he's like, yep, today's another 14 hours in VR chat. I'm going to sleep for 10 hours. I'm like, bro, what the heck is going on in this game, bro? God damn. I feel like you're, you're going to start seeing like zeros and ones if you put your headset on for that long. I don't know, man. Some people are crazy, but you did a 56 hours for your birthday. It was for a one year uh, celebration, which makes sense. I just feel like some people do like these crazy, like 1000 hour stream out of nowhere. And I'm like, what the heck? I guess if I was to do a 24 hour, maybe I'll do it for like charity or something like that for a good cause. So then besides me being miserable for most of it, it's for a good cause, you know, not just in my own pockets, but um, anyway. We'll, we'll get on to the next question. So the next question we have here uh, for Lanfear is, do you have plans to expand into doing YouTube, or sorry, into doing VTubing and using a 2D or 3D model playing variety gaming? Any games you look forward to streaming in the future? Lanfear responds by saying, I do plan on getting more into VTubing and even have a 2D model being rigged currently. Ooh, okay. I, I did an illustration sneak peek not too long ago when I was doing my play for a stray. It's that cat game. And I can't wait to get the finished model. I have a huge list of games I want to play, but one I'm looking forward to is Callisto uh, Protocol. That's the that's a spooky game. That's like the that's like the Dead Space game. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw all about that. I'm I'm all about that game. I mean Dead Space was like that game came out like a decade ago. And it's still considered to be a really good horror game because it's like a space horror game, which a lot of people... I guess there's like Alien Isolation, but there's not too many like, you know, good horror space games. And uh, this game, I, I feel like it's going to be up there. It's pretty brutal, you know, and like the deaths and the, the gore and stuff. So I'm definitely excited for that one. That's definitely going to be a lot of fun. I feel like 
I, I feel like Landfear isn't afraid of anything. I feel like they're just there with like the chainsaw going like like and just killing everything and then they're just like stone face, you know? You're just like, how is this scary? Yeah. <laughs> You're just enjoying all this gore and murder. I mean look at the look at them in their eyes. Look at they're clearly psychotic. Look at them. What? Anyway, next question. <clears throat> what was I talking about? So I was just role playing. Um. No, they're just they're just really good at games. No, I only say that because I remember at the end of of Neon Divide season two, I I still say this all the time to my chat, but I, I always think that Landfear was like the MVP of that uh of that final mission you really killed like 40 aliens like if it was like a call of duty match you'd literally be on top of the fucking leaderboard like i i remember seeing like different point of views and landfear would just run up and go like doing all this like fucking like i don't know what it is like paintball shit you're like you're crouching down like i was like what is this dude this is like some pro esports stuff bro just literally just killed everything dude like they they really spawned in and then everything's dead. And even the even the DMs are like, what the heck? They're like, dude, Landfear's OP. And they and they had to like nerf you. <laughs> and then I had to like repair you several times. Because they had to nerf you. You're just too powerful. That's what I'm saying. Like that you can't fake that. That's real that's real talent. Like if there was like a like a like a first-person shooter VR, like uh, you know, I don't know esports. I want Landfear on my team. Landfear can like, Landfear's like Point Man from like from Fear. If you ever played that, they're literally like go slow mo and fucking like kill everything. They got like aimbot. They're fucking Soldier Seventy Six with the aimbot. You know, that's what it feels like. Anyway, that next question we have here. <laughs> out of the the ass land fear out of the recent vr chat updates in the past which uh in the past while which sorry i'm i'm like stuttering my own reading here in the past which quality of life changes are you most excited to see implemented or have been already land, re land fear responds by saying that's tough. I think a lot of the planned quality of life updates are uh, necessary and needed features, and I'm glad to see them being added. The text box, I think, would probably be one of the bigger ones for me personally, as pens have never been the same since Network IK. True. Uh, they've gotten better, but not really to a point where they are consistent. The small things can sometimes make a big difference, like the personal mirrors are really nice, which uh, when having to recalibrate full body, for example, there really isn't any... There really, there really isn't any one thing that stands out for me though. Yeah, like I said before the the interview, the text box system. Oh my god! Like I'm already in the open beta, so I've already you know tested a little bit. It appears above people's heads, so I do. They definitely said they can lower it, so it can be like uh, like you know chest level or lower. Because obviously looking up like this constantly can be really annoying, and like you pff, break your neck. But um, it's definitely a huge, 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 huge improvement because I remember, I, I remember many streams when Network IK, like they changed it around the same time they implemented the quest originally, which was like, what, two years ago, three years ago, whatever. It broke pens. And I was very, very vocal about that on Twitter, on my own stream, to all my mute friends. I was very vocal. I was like, what the heck is going on here? Like, I literally cannot communicate with people unless we like, d unless they DM me on Discord or we go to a world with a keyboard. And I was like, that's stupid. Like, what is this? So, uh, and pens are still broken. Like, I, I still have people use pens and I still can't understand what they're saying whatsoever. So I'm definitely happy that they uh, implemented this sort of text box system because uh, it just makes life a lot easier. It's also not just for mutes, it's also for um, the hard of hearing or deaf community as well. So uh, there's a lot of uh, interactions with, or uh, you know, integration with that. And also they're gonna be adding uh, speech to text as well. So again, for those people that wanna have that, but the texting system in itself is uh, very interesting. And I think how, it, how it's gonna work 
is um, you have to be close to the person as well to actually see the text as well. So it's not like you see, you, you see across the map or something like that. They want to make it, you know, like within a friend, like circle of friends, you know, within like proximity and stuff like that. Uh, I'm surprised you said there isn't really one thing that stands out. For me, there's a lot of things that are standing out with the open beta and with these changes. Like one thing that's really standing out to me because it actually affects me is the the conversa uh, conversation dome thing. So um, I have, I've talked about it, you know, here and there sparingly, but I have a learned disability. I have a, an auditory processing disorder. So when uh, I'm in a club or for example, at you know, in the cabin or whatever, and there's a lot of people talking uh, around me, uh, all the voices sort of just meld together and it just becomes gibberish. And I can't understand anything that someone's trying to say to me. Like I'm trying to focus on one person or one conversation and i can't understand anything because someone 20 feet away is like being obnoxious and loud now i granted you can lower their voices but it still doesn't help sometimes so they uh they actually added the uh so i'll read what you said on discord in a sec uh because i want to explain this so but they added the conversation dome and it allows me to like actually change the voice fall off kind of like when you're in your divide you can like make it whisper mode and stuff like that which is what we, we were using in the RP. It's kind of like that, but you can still hear people like a hundred feet away because if they're not using it, they're, they're thinking about implementing it. So then you can whisper to people near you, but that's not in the game yet. But it's been really, really a big change for me at least, stuff like that. Uh, so what Lanfear said on, on Discord was, uh, it was an adjustment not being able to rely on pens, yeah. And I consider more of a full package of needed features, so they're all equally important in nights. Oh yeah, of course. Like, I, I I think they're all very nice. I'm just happy that we're at least getting these changes. Um, like I said, the conversation dome is a huge one for me. Uh, some changes that people are looking forward to is like the color adjuster. Like they're talking about how you can like change the brightness or bloom in a world. Uh, I've actually off stream talked to a lot of people that have like epileptic seizures and stuff like that in VR, VR chat, or just in general. And they talk about how like, yeah, like a little too much bloom can literally cause me to have a seizure. And I'm like, oh shit. So like them being able to change that for a world, cause some worlds are cool, but some worlds have like way too much bloom because somebody like really doesn't know how to, I don't know, I guess do maps and just crank that bitch up to like 11. And I'm like, what are you doing? Uh, my eyeballs. So it's also for accessibility. Yeah, some worlds have very strong bloom. Yeah, absolutely. So you can change the settings. Not a setting. It's not. It's not in the game yet, but they're they're implementing that uh, probably within a week or two for open beta. But yeah, there's a lot of other things I could talk about, like the open beta. Uh, I think the other big one is uh, uh, currently is an open beta that I could do right now is like you can hide avatars bit ID. So that's a huge one. That was used to be a mod. So what, what, they, what that means is, let's say, um, classic example, I don't know. Let's say someone's using, like, you got a knuckles, and for some reason you get PTSD from looking at a, you got a knuckles and cause you have a panic attack or something. You can only block every you got a knuckles avatar for that specific avatar. Or a more, I guess, more realistic analogy or example of this. So I have friends that have phobias. For example, I have a friend who has a phobia of spiders, arachnophobia. And when they see a spider in VR chat, especially like the big ones, they get, they, they seize up and have, uh, you know, anxiety and panic attacks. So you can actually make it so you can just hide all of that specific model, like that specific uh, upload of that ID. It also can be useful for um, crashers and stuff like that. So, um, so I'm getting an invite. Um, but yeah, can can hide any unsafe models too? Absolutely, yep. Same thing with like crashers, unsafe models, stuff like that. So very, very useful because a lot of people who do crash people typically use the same avatar. So if you just hide one of it, it hides all the all, all, all the same IDs, they would have to literally delete the avatar and re-upload it to bypass that system. Which is a lot more effort than me just pressing one button. So, you know. I'm not saying crashing will go away. It won't. You just put safety settings on and then hide a avatar by author or a hide avatar by ID. And that solves probably like 95% to 99% of the issues. You're still going to run into some people, but it, you know, people always slip through the cracks. It's just the way it is. But, um, 
yeah, a lot of these quality of life changes, I'm definitely... Like, I think uh, another big one that I like is the main menu, being able to move it. Oh my god, I hate having to, like, look down like this. Or, like, or, you know, if you're in full body, if you've ever been in full body and you lay down, you try and open up the main menu, it, like, spawns way up here and you're like, ugh. You know, now you can just, like, lay down comfortably and then move the, the, the main menu to you. Oh my god, such a, like, quality of life change, you know? It also gave us a bunch of more favorite slots as well, so that's pretty sick. So more favorite slots to worlds, avatars, all that stuff, which I actually maxed out everything. Uh, so I, that's that's great for me because I favor a lot of worlds for like exploration and you know I favor a lot of like friends for like hangouts and like constant like parties and stuff. So yeah, all all these good quality of life changes that. Um, you know, I feel like it should have been in the game years ago, but yeah, you know, it is what it is, right? At least we have them, right? That's that's the important part. Same. I need more world favorites. Oh, that, yeah, right, right. You're not in the open bed. I keep forgetting, but you do get more. You get um, I can tell you how much more you get. Uh, you get, I think like, two hundred more. No, it's two fifty six. I think is what it is. In the max is now four hundred. So you get like, you know, so you get a bunch more. Yeah, yeah. And same with uh, favorite avatars. Uh, if you have VR Chat Plus, which you do have, you get way more uh, avatar slots as well. You have like f 200 more or something like that. So, yes. Anyway, uh, moving on to the next question here. Next question I asked Landfury was What VR games would you recommend people try out or play? I see you've been playing other VR games, games that are not VR Chat. Landfury responds by saying, I do my best to keep an eye on any new VR games coming out and to share those experiences with everyone. Some of the best ones I've played and would recommend would be The Walking Dead, Saints and Sinners. That's the one I played recently, not too long ago. I played that one. The only issue I had with it was uh, with Index. I kept dropping shit all the time, even though I changed the controls. That one's kind of like... I was like, uh, uh, butterfingers, but also because my index is probably like dirt belt. Like, look, I'm like moving my fingers. My pinky's not even moving properly. So that just goes to show you my controllers are a bit scuffy. Yo, thanks for the fall, Captain Rex. Appreciate that. Um, cooking similar VR, which I haven't tried yet. Half-Life Alex, which I have tried, obviously. After the fall... I played After the Fall recently. That was actually a lot of fun. I feel like After the Fall is literally Left 4 Dead. Just, you know, just VR version of it. It actually was quite a lot of fun. Especially with three friends. I played a, a dead guy and a patch of Vix and, a few, and, a, and one of her friends. And it was a lot of fun. Just like going around, just shooting things and go pew, 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 pew. And just shooting zombies and shit. And like being able to reload and, you know, that was fun. Survive is another... Left for Dead one. Oh, there's another one. ERP gods in my chat. Um, into the radius. That into radius. That was um, that's the uh, uh, stalker game, kind of or like Metro type game. Yes, yes. I heard about that one. Never played it. Don't know much too much about it, but I've heard about it. It's it's basically like your your stalker game, um, which is like you know in post apocalyptic Russia or whatever you know, or Ukraine or whatever, and, you know, there's, like, radiation and monsters, so it's kind of like that Fallout vibes, um, trying to survive, so, yeah, yeah, uh, Index usually has issues with most games, yeah, exactly, I've been playing it a lot recently, oh, nice, yeah, I had, I think the most issues I had was with Super Hot, because so I played Super Hot <laughs> VR, that game is six years old, by the way, if you didn't know that. Way before VR Chat. And the game was definitely not made for Index. So it took me like 30 minutes just to do one level. I got stuck because I was near the end and like these guys kept killing me and I couldn't grab. Like I couldn't grab the gun because it was not designed for Index. So I, I got stuck, but eventually I beat it all. I was sweating profusely after that, but yes. Um, that's just a classic example of a game that was not intended for, for Index, because Index was not a thing yet, so. Anyway. Um, into the Radius, which took me a while to get into. I was on the fence with that one for a long time, but I'm really happy I did it because it's been a lot of fun. If you're interested in VNs, 
What's VNs? Is that like... Vi oh, visual novels. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's some really fun ones and interactive ones. Tokyo Chronicle... Chronos, sorry. Uh, Tokyo Chronos. Uh, Alt... 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 DS? Alt DS? And their new one coming out... Disc... Disc... Scronia. Oh my god. What the... I can't read. I'm illiterate. But it's D-Y-S-C-H-R-O-N-I-A. Discronia? 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 What? Yeah, whatever. But anyway, if you're into visual novels, there's your visual novels right there. <laughs> Some really good scary scary games are Blair Witch VR. Yo, Blair Witch, that's kind of spooky. Uh, Forewarned, I bought Forewarned, haven't played it yet. Phasmophobia, I played probably 20 times. I play it once in a blue moon, but... I still think I will still stand by. Phasmophobia needs to have a versus mode, man. I need. I swear they need to have a mode where one player gets to play as the ghost, and then four of your friends got to figure it out. And I just think it'd be funny as hell as like with your friends just like wow, I'm behind you, and you're like what the, and you're like what, you know what I mean? Control like that's that's infinite content right there. That's like infinite YouTube content, infinite Twitch content. Collabs every U VTuber VR chat person will hop on that like you know I'm just saying What the heck? If not someone needs to make that like forewarned or some other game make I mean forewarned you can actually play as a you know mummy or whatever but Anyway, Phasmophobia was good until they broke with their overhaul update and I haven't played it since devour was surprisingly fun VR experience I played devour uh, when it was PC only, and I only had one map. So I haven't played Devour since, but I've definitely heard there is a VR version of it, and it terrifies me. Absolutely terrifies me. So I definitely need to try that at some point. Oh my god. You can tell me, I, I'm, I'm afraid, I do not like horror games, but I play them because I scream, and I get spooked, and I... You know, I'll tell you this. I played Five Nights at Freddy's VR. I only made it to night two, and I was literally freaking out. And I didn't. I also never played Five Nights. Uh, sorry, I never played Five Nights at Freddy's before, and I also never really watched Five Nights at Freddy's. Any of the videos, I, I ignored it for like ten years, because I want. Because I was too afraid. I was like, I don't like jump scares. I don't like this game. This series, whatever. I don't want to get involved. And I didn't even know, I was so, I didn't even know how to play properly. So for example, like, uh, when you turn on the light, I thought the light for Fights of Freddy's, I thought that was supposed to like scare the animatronics to like go away. I thought I was like, hey, the light's on, go away, go away. That's not what that does. The light just tells you that they're there. That's it. In desktop, it makes more sense. But when you're in VR, um, I can see in the dark without the light because the way the index brightness is. So I can actually see the animatronic without even using the light, which saves a lot of energy. So I guess that's uh, overpowered for VR. But in desktop, that doesn't work. So I would click on the light all the time and be like, yo, get out of here, get out of here. And it didn't do anything. So I just wasted all my energy like all the time. And I kept getting jump scared. And I, and I said, fuck this. And I also had a heart rate monitor. My heart rate went up to 180. I felt like I was gonna have a heart attack. I never played ever since. Because I don't want to die on stream. So, yeah, yeah. That just goes to show you how I feel about horror games. However, not all horror games, like survival horror, like Resident Evil, that's fine. That's what it, you got a gun, pew, 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 pew. You know, bang, 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 bang. You know, that's not that's not scary. But when you, when you take it like an Outlast game, I played Outlast on stream. I don't like games where you have to run. And like you're and you're just getting chased. I don't like those types of games. I don't like them in VR chat. I don't like them in VR or anything. Never enjoyed chasing simulator. And then you have to hide. And the guy's like, where are you? What are you hiding, huh? And I'm like, oh my god, get away from me. Where are you, little piggy? And I'm like, oh, please. That's how I feel about all these horror games. Hey, what's up, chat? Just a reminder, uh, since Lanfear is typing, 
if you have any questions for Land for Your Eye, we're almost been going for almost an hour now. It's been 50 minutes, but in a little bit, uh, once I throw all my questions here, which will be another like four or five, um, essentially we'll be taking some questions from the chat and stuff like that. So if you're interested, um, hold off on your questions or use the quest or sorry, use the Google document link, which is as much like questions in my chat. We'll take questions from there as well. So anyway, Lancer says, you should try a game called deadness. You have to run from things while in a wheelchair. Oh my God. What the heck? Why would I want to run away from things in a wheelchair, dude? What the fuck? Like, come on, man. The, you telling me I have to run from things normally, and now I'm confined to a wheelchair? Oh my god, dude. At that point, I'm just like, alright, just take me. I'm in a wheelchair. It, just, just do it. That's way too, that's way too scary. What the heck? That sounds like nightmare feel. It's very stressful struggling with the chair. Oh, I imagine you have to like wheel it, right? So you have to like. Eh, eh. There's one game. You ever actually you ever play Cry of Fear? No, that's I recommend playing that. That it's a free game. It came out like, oh god, like eight plus years ago, but it's free. It's like a free six hour game. It's horror, but it's also like a shooter, like survival horror. But so many jump scares, like, uh, like you just be chilling, and then like a door breaks, and some fucking like lady of scissors tries to get you, and you're like, what the fuck? But there is a por portion of the game where you're in a wheelchair, and you have the wheel and shit. Oh my god! And you have to have a gun too, so you have a wheelchair and you're trying to like shoot monsters and shit. Oh my god, that was terrible. That was oh, that was crap fear. But you should play that one. That, that one's a pretty good, and it's free. It, it may be a little bit confusing because like some of the puzzles are a bit like dated and really like, it's like, what the heck? But for the most part, it's a pretty, it's a pretty fun one. Crane Craft Fear was originally Half-Life 1. Yeah, it was. It's, it's like a Half-Life 1 mod, but it's been so heavily modded, it doesn't look like a Half-Life 1 game. It's like its own thing, its own guns and everything, storyline, monsters, everything. It's based off of, like, uh, like a two guys that made a game, and it takes place in, like, Sweden or something. So it's based off the guy's, like, hometown or something. Anyway, next question we have here, I asked Lanfear, was, uh, have you tried out or thought about other VR social games, like Chill VR... Neos VR, Helios, Rec Room, Alt Space VR. Have you considered trying them out at some point? I know some people have because of the recent EIC update. Lan Lanfear responds by saying, I have looked into a couple of those, but uh, found they're far too early in development for me to really be interested in experiencing. It would take a lot for me to really commit to any of those. My home has been in my VR chain. I don't really... Uh, expect that changing anytime soon unless something really big happens or one of these platforms exceeds VR chat. Well, good luck to those platforms. That's all I'm saying. Have here ha having some more options is always a good thing, though, and I hope those platforms continue to develop and get better. I tried out oh, not all of those. I only tried uh, uh, Neos and uh, Chill Out. So far, uh, I could try at Rack Room, but Rack Room I've heard is like the Winnie Hut Jr. of like VR chat. You know, it's like uh, it's like uh, a lot of kids and stuff. So I, I just, you know, I'm not into that. So, and then Alt Space is the opposite. I heard Alt Space VR. You can't even if you use play. I swear to God, if you use Play Space Mover like this, you actually it actually bans you from the game. It auto ban. I'm I'm not joking you. I'm just telling the truth. Like, uh, Thrill Seeker, who's a YouTuber, does a lot of VR stuff, he, he was playing Alt Space because he was uh, getting an award for being a, a VR uh, content creator. And you can't jump in the game, so he had to get up on the stage, and then he used Play Space just like this, and it and it kicked him from the lobby and says, it says modded client detected, and then it kicked him, and he was like, oh, I can't accept the award, and he was also streaming it. <laughs> so, Alt Space uh, hates Play Space Mover, so, uh... 
Uh, and last time I checked, old space is full of like boomers. Like, re I'm talking about like the 40 year old, 50 year old boomers. that are just like, I'm a lawyer, and here's my, you know, like they're like, I swear to God, I saw like videos on YouTube. Like this guy was talking about like, yeah, I'm in, the, I'm in the stock business, and I'm like, dude, what the? I'm like, what? It's like either you go to rec room, it's full of kids, or you go to Alt Space VR and it's full of like fifty year old doctors talking about like I don't know, their colonoscopies or whatever. I don't <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like stuff that's whatever. Um sorry, I lost my place here. Uh oh sorry, no, I read it all. Um yeah, I I do agree that um I think a lot of the alternatives to VR chat are kinda just building their foundations or, or just trying to get there obviously with the eac update some people quit or left to try other ones and for the first time neos got a thousand players and chill out but it's they went from a thousand back down to 200 so i'm just saying but i mean there, there's some options there like uh when I, I i said this before but i'll say it to you and everybody else watching um, when I tried out Trill VR, sure, it's not as, you know, it's it's almost like VR Chat 2017, 2018 is the best way to describe it in terms of like stuff. But there is like a few things that VR Chat doesn't have. So one thing that's really cool that maybe VR Chat will actually implement is called the prop system. So uh, we have that with like physics bones in a way currently, but essentially how it works is uh, so you know how you upload avatars and worlds? There's a third one called props. And so I can actually just spawn like a pen. And like, I was talking to someone in chill VR and they were a mute and I was like, how do I communicate with you? And then this person's like, oh, one second. And it goes, and then pulls out like a pen. I was like, was that on your avatar? They're like, no, no, no. I just spawned this for anybody. And anybody can grab it and start writing with it just like in VR chat. And I was like, that's sick. And not only was it a pen, some people uh, could spawn other things. So some guy spawned like a lightsaber. I was like, Zzz, you know, like, and I was like, oh, that's cool. I was like, okay, what else can you do? And the guy's like, well, I can spawn vehicles too. And I was like, what? So he just spawns like a Dodge Charger out of nowhere. And he's like, all right, here's my car, jump in. I was like, what? And we were like, we were like in Gaia Night. He just spawns like a Dodge Charger out of nowhere. He's like, all right, jump in, dude. And I jump in, I was like, how do I drive? He's like, just use WSAD or if you're on, you know, use your joystick. And I'll start driving. And I was like, what the heck? I'm actually driving a car that this guy just spawned? Like what? He's like, I was like, how many can you spawn? He's like, as many as you want, though more obviously goes more lag. So like he spawned a bunch of cars and we were just doing a like drifting Tokyo drift, like around Gaia Knight. Like, what? <laughs> so that's kind of cool. So I think something like that would be interesting, though obviously people would, you know, you would have to police it somehow because, you know, I don't want to be chilling the back cat and then someone spawns in like a, like a skyscraper in front of me and I'll be like, what the heck is this? So. Yeah, that, that was, I would say that's, that was one cool thing. The only other thing I can think of, um, you can actually see who's in a lobby before you join an instance. That was pretty cool. And the only other thing I can really think of was you can preload maps before even in uh, switching them. That was the, the other really cool thing. Besides that, it's mostly very comparable to, to VR chat, like 2018, 2019-esque before the physics bones and the IK updates and all that stuff. But for the most part, it looks promising. I definitely hope that they keep working on it and keep doing it because competition is good for for, the, for this type of platform because if VRChat's at the top and they own the monopoly, then they don't have to work as hard. But because of EIC, suddenly, uh-oh, all these quality of life changes, uh-oh, like 50 updates in like two weeks. So, you know, that that's a good thing because us as the consumers get to, you know, enjoy these updates a new a new way to crash people to spawn infinite items yeah i literally joined a black cat and chill of vr and someone spawned like a hundred bottles kind of like they're playing like skyrim or some shit and they duplicated the watermelon one thousand times and then i started lagging and i was like oh so yeah there there are some but you can also block props as well so it's like a it, it, it's a thing you can do so there is some you know issues but they'll probably get them sorted so if it was added to vr chat it'd probably be another thing like a like a security thing you would have to turn on and off props for certain players or you might have to limit it you know or maybe you have just up have to upload it when you make a world do you allow props yes or no and you know 
So there's a lot more things. That's probably why it's taken such a long time for something like VRChat to implement it, because there's a lot of like issues that people can do. Anyway, next question. Uh, I asked Lanfear, how does it feel to be partnered on Twitch? Were you surprised when you got it? Lanfear responds by saying, I wouldn't say I was surprised when I got it because it was something I worked hard towards and with everyone's support and love, the requirements were met uh, fairly early on. My first application was turned down simply because of how quickly it was sent in. Within the first month, oh my god, one month of streaming, yo, can you partner, partner me? I believe... Uh, but, uh, I believe, but the feedback I got from that suggests that as long as I keep doing what I was doing, that I didn't have to do anything or about. They just want to make sure I was going to be consistent. I was very excited when it was finally, or it was approved, but I see it as more of a chat's accomplishment over my own. Oh, I gotcha. Yeah, it took me two attempts to, uh, to get partnered. First time they were like, oh, you don't have enough viewers. You have like only 70. So I was like, okay, bet. And then I did you know, 40 interviews in like 40 days, and then I got 170 viewers, and then I got partnered, and there you go, so, yeah, easy clap. However, that didn't take me, uh, you know, a, a month, you know, that took me um, <clears throat> several years, but that's okay, you know, uh, sometimes it's like the, the classic, you know, tortoise versus hare situation, you know, we all reach the, the finish line at some point, you know, so anyway, uh, next question. So the next question I uh, asked Lanfear is, uh, what do you miss about the old days of VR chat that you wish would come back? Nostalgic question for those like you who played back in 2017. Uh, Lanfear responds by saying, "There's a lot I would like to, I would like to either have back or go back to. But if I had to pick one thing, I'd say how close the support of the larger communities used to be." It was more like a big family and everyone was excited to see each other visit and do anything that comes up and it wasn't uncommon for random adventures, game nights, and parties just to happen out of nowhere. Oh, I 100% agree. 100%. Uh, the journey is the important part. That's to my previous thing you said about the partnership, yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I agree, I think. Um, you know, obviously I wasn't a part of like the YouTube side, like the Nags side until like 2018, you know, mid with that crossover stuff. But even on the Twitch side, it, 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 it was very similar in the aspect of like random stuff would just happen. Like, you know, for me, we always, what I would do was we, you meet up in the presentation room every single day. Like that was the first thing that we did. We made a friend's world. You go to the presentation room, people just gather, chill around, draw random stuff, whatever. And then Poke or somebody would be like, hey, this is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna do this. And it wasn't always organized. Like sometimes just like, hey, you wanna guys wanna explore? Some There's a new map, you wanna go check it out? And we would just go do that. And then he'd be like, all right, you guys want to play like steel and gold or something? And be like, okay. And he'd be like, hey, there's this big spooky map. You want to do the spooky map? Okay. Hey, this map's pretty big. You want to play hide and seek? And it wasn't even like on a game mode map. It was just we made hide and seek up. So stuff like that, you know? Or even in presentation room, we would just be like, hey, let's do an art contest. And so people would draw like their favorite animal. And then, you know, we would walk around and see what everyone drew in like five minutes. So stuff like that was very nostalgic, excuse me, for me. And just going to random clubs and, and uh, I remember going to the Void Club hundreds of times and just going to Publix and messing with people. And then we would always like make up some like fake RP drama and then go to like the courtroom map. And be like, all right, is this person lying or, or blah, 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 or like, hey, I, I saw you had pat that person that's illegal you're under arrest and like I don't know just like random crap like that all the time like you literally would just be like I don't know accusing people of random crap and, and the chat knew like it was just for fun and we just go to the courtroom and then people like hit the gavel and be like eh, you're you're guilty you're guilty you know and then people would like pretend to be the lawyer or whatever and the, and like the attorney or the sorry the prosecutor and the and the defendant or defense you know courtroom rp is always was f crazy oh absolutely like the, the random stuff that like i remember was so outlandish 
And, and it was funny because a lot of the times, like, the direction would just change randomly. Like, someone would just join mid, like, courtroom RP and you'd be like, that's false information. And then, like, I remember I think some people actually, like, added photos <laughs> to their avatars. So they would, like, take a screenshot in game and then, like, add it to their avatar and be like, I have this evidence. And they'll pull it out. And people are like, oh, and be like, oh my god, like you know, a few people did that. That wasn't too common. People didn't know how to do avatar edits, but the few that did definitely uh, outshined the rest. But um, I remember someone got married, and an hour after they were in the quorum getting a divorce because they referred to their significant other by the by by my name on accident. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Damn. Yeah, I remember stuff like that happening. Like I think another like classic thing was everybody would get married back then. I, I remember like I swear early twenty eighteen was like everyone wanted to get married. It was like the meta or something. Like everybody would just, like every day there'd be like five weddings. And the stupidest thing is that like these people weren't even like dating or anything. They would just know each other for like a week and then be like, oh my god, let's get married in VR. <laughs> I was like, what the heck? And and you know, I think the first or second wedding I took serious and then after that I just didn't care anymore. I was just like, yeah, whatever, dude. And just you know. There were wedding events every few days. Oh yeah, it was it was it was ridiculous. Hello everyone in chat. Hello. But uh yeah, it was it was the same with the Twitch side too. It was just way too many marriages, way too many weddings. There was a few serious weddings. But like a hundred like you know, silly weddings, you know. So like I I attended a wedding earlier this year in VR channel. It was very serious, so quite the contrast to what happened like four years ago. Then that branches to mass adoptions and family trees. Oh my, yes, the family trees in VR chat. Oh god, don't look at the VR chat legends wiki page. Don't look at that. You're gonna you get you click on you, it's a it's a rabbit hole. You click on certain people. Oh my god, they got like. Three wives, five sisters, half brothers, half sisters, uh, mom, dad, grandfather, gr grandparents, great grandchildren, uncles, aunts, cousins, second cousins, um, adopted kids, um, you know, test tube babies. I don't know. <laughs> they got a bunch of stuff on there, man. Way too complicated for my simple brain. That has to be put to an end with how out of control I got? Oh, I imagine it. I think a lot of it is around, like, nags. Because when I look at his Wikipedia page, it's like... It's like a novel. And like it says all the family relations, it's like literally like 20 names. I was like, what is this? What is happening here? You know? <sighs> I understand it was all for RP, but I think at a certain point it gets a little too intense. Because, like, I don't know. I think, like, back then I guess it makes sense. But, you know, when you look at it, like, in 2022, it's like, whoa, what what just happened? Like, like some character comes out of nowhere, and then they're like, that's my kid. Yeah, that right there, that's my kid. And it'd just be like some, like, lolly or chibi or something. You'd be like, that's my kid right there. That's that's the that's the next leader of my family right there. That right there. What do you think, brother-in-law, sister-in-law? What do you, what do you think, uh, grandparents? Yo, what do you think? What do you think? This is my child right here. It'd just be some person, and like the only thing they'll say is like that da, da, and they're like, "Yep, that's them right there." That, yep. And I I think it was more for I, I think the whole point of it was just for like you know. Twitch or YouTube audience because people eat that stuff up, you know, like that's just the way it is. You know, it's the same thing with like, I think even, even in like GTA RP, they have stuff like that too, where people just get attached to characters and be like, oh my God, it's kind of crazy when people are like, oh my God, how could you say that to your cousins, brothers, sisters, half father, mother, 
sister, how could you say that to them? What would you do that? For? It's like, what the heck did I just, what? You know? It, it gets out of hand. But anyway. Anyway. In the end, everyone's related to Nags. I'm not, so pff, there's that. Um, the next question we have uh, is uh, any final thoughts you'd like to say to the VR chat community, your friends and viewers? Uh, Landfear responds by saying, I'm immensely grateful to be part of the overwhelmingly sweet and caring communities I'm a part of, both VR chat and Twitch. Of all the friends I've made and will make and the beautiful memories made and will make, I'm looking forward to seeing what the futures has for all of us and what adventures and mischief we'll get into. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Aw, it's very sweet. And then Landfrew says uh, on Discord, it also led to some fun interactions though. That's for the previous question, but yeah, absolutely. So that's all the questions I have for Landfear that I uh, set up. However, uh, if anybody has any questions for Landfear in the chat or the Google Dog, let me take a peek at that. Let's start quacking questions from there. So let's do that. Let me see. Any questions, any questions? And then also, I always like to ask this, it's not required, but I always like to ask in case the guest has something they want to ask me. Is there anything you want to ask me, Landfear? You, you can always ask me a question too. If you, ever, you don't have to, but I always like to ask just in case. Because sometimes, yeah, I've done so many interviews. People do eventually ask certain things. They're like, oh, what do you think about this? Or, I don't know, what do you think about that thing? Or whatever. It's always like to ask. And if not, then we will be wrapping up in the next probably five or ten minutes. But uh, yeah, we've been going for an hour and ten minutes, so yeah, like always, say like to say minimum one hour, max two hours. Any questions, anybody? Any questions? This is land for the legendary Neko Kakro right here. Yeah, this is it's top tier. You have to ask land for any question, any questions. Ugh. Uh. Doug, I have another de sorry. Have a another good recommendation for a VR game for them. Dead Effect Two, zombie shooter, really fun. So there's another uh, shooting game right there for you. Even VR Chat itself has lore. Oh, absolutely, dude. Like the VR Chat Wikipedia. Sorry, yeah, the VR Chat Legends Wikipedia page is full of lore. I even have my own Wikipedia page though. Uh, it hasn't been updated in years. It's mostly about my sort of upgrade upbringings, but it does end with saying like, "Hey, I do interviews," and that's that's true. That's all I've been really been doing, besides some RP stuff. I've seen that. Oh, Dead Effect Two. VR Chat has uh, pretty extensive lore RP wise. Oh yeah, there's so much. Like, you could spend an entire I don't know months, weeks. Looking at VR chat RP and backstories and all this stuff, like I couldn't, I couldn't tell you how many RP groups there are in VR chat, either casual or serious. Just you know, if whenever you go to like VRCon, they'll have like all the booths of like different RP groups sometimes, and I swear there's like five or six different booths of just like SCP, and they're all different. I'm like, what the? And that's just SCP, you know? I'm like, what the heck? Also, anybody in the audience has any questions as well, you can also ask. You don't have to, but I always ask. Anybody? <laughs> yeah, I always like to ask, man, you know? People always like, yo, where's the audience questions, bro? And then I ask. You don't have to, you can just watch, but I always like to ask. Um, the wiki was made during the crossover to keep track of everything that was going on. Oh, really? I didn't know about that. But I believe it. Yeah, because, like, <laughs> the crossover was, like, 40 or 50, like, individual, like, content creators from either Twitch or YouTube. And everybody had, like, their own, like, motives and what they were doing. It was, like, 
it, it felt like the end of Avengers, like Endgame, where like you have like all these different sides and all this stuff. And I was just like, what's happening? It's like, it's almost like that multiverses game that just came out where you get like Shaggy and then and then you have like Rick and Morty and whatever. And you're like, what's going on, man? And you're like, or like, no, it's more actually a better example, better analogy, Fortnite. You get like, you get like Goku and then you get like Rick and Morty and then you got like, you know, uh, Dwayne the Rock Johnson and you got like, uh, LeBron James, it's like the weirdest like crossover episode, you know, that that's how I felt like that that Wikipedia pages for that crossover. It was like everybody everybody wanted in, and, it, and I remember some funny moments. Like I remember like Dracoiz, he would walk around, and then all he did was he would ask everyone to spit in a cup, and he's like, I must consume your spit. And then he got everyone spit in a cup and then consumed it. And it says, now I have all your power or something like that. I don't remember. You know, there's silly stuff like that. I played as a pimp and I would walk around and do silly things. And that's what I did. You know, other people were uh, very edgy. You know, like Curry Games was like, I can break your neck like a tweak. And I was like, okay, dude, relax. So, you know, there, there was a lot of, it was a lot of, uh, Interesting characters. You went from people that were literal gods that can destroy the universe to uh, literally just a guy that wants to spit in a cup. So, you know, it was uh, a lot of different personalities meshing. Um, a lot of things happened, but it is what it is. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I got to meet a lot of amazing people. So that's, that's the takeaway from it all, I would say was that sure the RP probably ended in a really like weird like oh we're all gonna forget what just happened here and then move on with life but I mean the, the the best part of it was just meeting people and having fun because shortly after that is when I let, met Lan and then you know hanging out and doing all that stuff so I, I guess you could say everything happens for a reason you know so I got, I got to meet Lanfear and get to interview them and hang out with them. And I feel like if I, if I didn't, if I wasn't there for that crossover, it probably would have taken another like six months or a year or even longer to meet Lanfear. Probably. Or longer. You know? So. Uh, I remember helping with that, getting more staff and people for it. Yeah, you mean the Wikia, w Wikipedia. It was a rare event that involved the entire community and brought a lot of people together. Yeah, it was it was like one of the first times having cuz the YouTube side was very like separate from the Twitch side. The, the, the YouTube the YouTube side was mostly I mean not entirely YouTube. Like there was other people that made YouTube content like James Key and like, you know, stuff like that, but for the most part for like the RP and stuff like that, it was mostly Nags's community, which is all happened to be mostly on YouTube. And then on the Twitch side, it was uh, uh, Chips and, um, well, Team 5 was really, I was like the only one from Team 5 that got involved, but uh, Whoops and all them and stuff like that. But then we had the Twitch side and the YouTube side, and for some reason, like, I didn't really look at the comments on YouTube, but some people were like, ah, screw those Twitch guys, me, I, you know, I was just like, what the heck? And then other people were like, yeah, screw those YouTube guys, and I'm just like, man, this is like some, like, High school, you know, like, uh, my school's better than your school type vibes. But whatever, at the end of the day, the, I think the funny, okay, here's the real reason, okay. I'm gonna tell you something, all those people, they're on YouTube side, they're all on, they're all on Twitch now, so I think the Twitch side won, I'm just saying, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, Nags included, so I'm just saying. I think the Twitch side won, you know, I'm just saying, bro. Yo, thanks for that fall, I appreciate that. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm just saying. So yeah, it was it was a fun time. That was over four years ago. Cause that happened in like May of 2018. It's August, so that was that was just over four years ago. My God. It was it's crazy to think that I even put up with that. Cause like I had an Oculus Rift. I had like a GTX like 660. I could barely function VR chat. I also had to hide 75% of the people in the lobby. So most of the people were literally just floating robots. And I could only like show their avatar when I was directly speaking to them. That was it. I had literally 15 FPS streaming. It, it was 
terrible. I don't know how I managed it. And also the RP started at like midnight or like one in the morning, which I never want to do ever again because then I was stepped to like four or five in the morning. What the heck? What the heck, man? I, I can't do that, man. What? It's because uh, it's because uh, Chips was uh, PSD at the time, so obviously for him it's only like 9 p.m. But for me it's like midnight, so I was just like, Ugh. I was dying inside. But whatever, I had fun with it. It was an interesting time. Don't worry, Re Re Rebels audience, we're just invisible. Yeah, it's, uh, I have people are using invisible avatars, copium. Yeah, absolutely true, true. But um. Any, anything else you want to mention, Landfear, or talk about? Like I said. Um, if not, we can wrap up. Which I can do in the next uh, couple minutes here. It's good. It's been a good while. I appreciate for coming by, and maybe you'd be interested in my future ideas, which this Friday hopefully will get finished. Or it'll be probably, you know, next Monday will be get done. So probably about the 22nd. But uh, the improv and the um, fashion show stuff. Cause I want to bring that back because I think it'd be a lot of fun to just do improv and just you know have people come up and you know play charades and stuff like that I think it'd be fun I think it'd be fun to do like kind of like mute charades you know or just charades in general like full body and having people act out things and people have to guess and stuff like that'd be a huge amount of uh, of fun keep, up, keep, keep me updated I do like the idea so absolutely yeah like I said like this weekend the probably at least the assets would be finished then probably in a you know i would say september i should probably have it all sorted added to the world the coding the udon stuff so because i have to double check everything's working but uh hopefully by september i should have that i want to do improv nights probably once a week once or twice a week uh depends on how people well you know want it, how much off people want to do it and then the fashion shows would be like once a month because they give people um time to build avatars and outfits and stuff like that but that's that's the idea with that at least um last week i actually just started doing animation showcases but not in this world the animation showcases like i could just go to like a lag free box essentially because you have to have huge effects yeah yeah and uh, i did that and uh, a lot of people enjoyed it actually a lot of people were, like had a lot of fun getting their showcase a lot of stuff and a lot of them actually are from the metaverse or purple lotus so, uh, getting to see, like, boss avatars and, like, these crazy, you know, almost, like, explosions and, and you know, characters that people develop and have all this lore for is actually a lot of fun. It's very, very exciting to be a part of. So, that one's going to happen in another, like, month or so. So, it's going to be another, like, monthly event. Um, that was a lot of fun. I streamed it all. Lots and lots of exciting stuff. Uh, probably get some more people for that. So there's a lot of ideas I have, a lot of ideas. And then, you know, a podcast, you know, at some point and some more chill discussions. Hello, Eric. How you doing? Uh, Gabe or Gabri, thanks for the follow. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, there used to be cons a consistent event in early 2018, animation slash particle show slash contest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh... I was in the last like year I've been looking at or like you know even more recently I just looked up like uh, VR chat animation showcases a lot of them were in 2018 2019 um, from various YouTubers or streamers and I love what they were doing and I was just like I want to do that in 2022 I want to bring it back so that's why I did you know last week I brought it back and people really really enjoyed that stuff so yeah yeah that's why I wanted to do it and like I said with the improv stuff I, I got inspired um, because of the RP I did with Nyan Divide, but also because of, I was, I did attend a few of the RP stuff with Nags, and I just liked that. It was just fun. Like, a bunch of people would just come together and just act out. It was with Ag and all of them, and, and just, it was just fun. I just want to do it, but in this world, have a little more, like, professional setting with the cameras and stuff. Um, it was a lot of fun, and I want to bring that back, and I think people are going to enjoy it. That's the whole point of it. So, yeah, yeah, lots of exciting things coming soon. But anyway, I think we'll wrap up here. It's been almost an hour and a half. So I like to say thank you so much to Land for you. I really, really appreciate it. Mwah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed tonight's uh, show and tonight's interview. And it's been a pleasure to always have Land for you on. 
to hang out and talk and and be an awesome guest and you know until next time uh you know we'll see what happens and we'll see if you if you want to come back for maybe another interview or another one of my other shows which will be happening very soon hopefully copium but uh, i think they will because i'm really paying the guy so you know it should work pretty fast so that's what i'm excited for thanks for the interview stream she seems to trail absolutely thanks for a great show appreciate it appreciate it I'll uh, set up the stream intro, or yeah, outro, and then we'll uh, chill here for a little bit. And uh, we'll also take a photo, as I always do. But uh, I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. I'll go raid somebody. But I appreciate it. Thank you so much, everybody.